I am safer as a Jew wearing a yarmulke in Dubai and Abu Dhabi than I am on the campus of Columbia University or even. <laughs> this man is being more slippery. He's being more slippery than the lubricants that he sells in his daughter's sex shop. And that's the reality <laughs> of the situation. Got him! You can't start the combo with immediate ad hominems and got so pissed when he got hit with it. Why are he, you shaking? I've got Muhammad, vibrators in your pocket. Come on, this, it's a serious I think he's got one of his daughter's vibrators. Come on, pocket. leave him, please. Ah! Yeah, she has a kosher sex uh, shop. Anna Boteach also, for those of you who don't know, I think is the same daughter. I'll take it back. That was pretty good. Muhammad, good job. Now let's watch Muhammad Hijab versus Rabbi Shmuley. Both people no, are, no, please, Morgan, I would say, extremists in their own regard. Let's take a look. Israel at war, the uncensored debate. Muhammad Hijab is a Muslim philosopher, scholar, and He is and such a, he's a very good debate lord, though. His first appearance on this show was viewed by more than 8 million people. Rabbi Shmuley Botiak has been called the most famous rabbi in America. He is the international best-selling author of Kosher Hate and the Israel Warrior. Both men are passionate, both men are influential, and they both have vehemently opposing views. Tonight, they go uncensored and head to head. We're bringing together two very opinionated, passionate, influential people, very opposing views, and we're gonna have a proper debate, and we're gonna see if somewhere. It is so funny to have Piers Morgan moderate a proper debate. Okay. There is perhaps more that we can agree on than we first imagined. So, thank you for joining me, gentlemen. We tossed a coin before we came on air tonight. And uh, actually, you won the, the, the toss, um, and you said you want to go second. I so, defer to my, my brother. And the way this will work, uh, Mohammed, we have four sections of this debate. And at the start of each one, you'll both get one minute uninterrupted to say what you want to say about each of the themed uh, titles of each block. So you go first, and at the end of your minute, you'll hear a sound, and when you hear that, uh, you end, and then a Rabbi Shmuley gets his chance to speak. So the first theme is a simple one. Are Hamas to blame? You have a minute, Mohammed, from now. From one perspective, Hamas started the battle because, uh, obviously, from October 7th, even they themselves titled it to final Al-Aqsa or the flooding of Al-Aqsa. But from another perspective, if you really look at it from an international law perspective, we're talking about 1967, we're talking about resolution, Syria Resolution 242, in which it is actually stated that um, Israel is in a belligerent state because they're occupying the West Bank, East Jerusalem and Gaza. True. And they have been, so therefore the war has been continual for a very long time according to international law. But let's remove Hamas from the situation altogether. Let's remove them. What do you have? You have the West Bank. And what do you have in the West Bank? You have 187 children who have been put in prisons. They have been put in prisons, according to Bet Salem, without charge. You have 44 children before October the 7th that have been killed before October the 7th in just 2023 alone. So if you remove Hamas from the equation, what well, you have, you have the West Bank. You, you remove dominance from the equation, you have the West Bank. And what do you have? You have occupation. You have settlement, which you condemned, rightfully so. You condemned that on your show. The settlement's there. Okay. Rabbi Shmuley, one minute to respond. Resolution 242 in the UN. The fuck? Doesn't mention a single thing about aggre aggression or aggressor. That is a total fact. Oh, okay. That was on the... That was on the fucking show, right? I was like, was that me? Fabrication, and it speaks about disputed territories. But let's be clear. The occupier of Gaza is Hamas. They won an election in 2006, had a civil war. Wait, what do you mean? Won an election? They did. They did win an election. Was Mahmoud Abbas took the Palestinian Authority officials, threw them off buildings, killed Muslims, killed Arabs. Mahmoud Abbas is afraid to go to Gaza. He's terrified of Hamas. He has God. He's so bad. This stuff is so... I mean, this is so easy to make mince mean out of, okay? That was America's doing. It was America's design. No, but Palestinians have never had, like, the autonomy to be able to conduct elections. Why can't they do one now, okay? He hasn't been there since 2007. And let's be clear. Hamas is an abomination to Islam. So, Sultan Salah al-Adin, the greatest Muslim conqueror of all time, after whom the main artery in, in Gaza is named, he said that you have to allow all prisoners to be redeemed. He would never hold hostages. This is, and remember, the Islam is about fair treatment of prisoners of war. Hamas beheaded Thai non-Jewish workers. You asked in your last appearance here for real uh, first-hand sources. I'm the first-hand source. I saw it in Kibbutz Alumim. They raped women. They had sex with dead women's okay. bodies. They are evil and do <laughs> What? I'm sorry. Yo! Dude, he is...
nutty, dude. Do the okay, right things and call them up, evil. Up, All right, up. we've had a minute each. Okay, we've got a, a passionate start. Mohammed, let me ask you about Hamas. I think that's... So, for the record, I think Rabbi Shmuley hitting that fucking bar makes him look utterly unhinged to the average person. Like, I, I think he, he went way above and beyond. Now, that is the difference between Hasbara propaganda that... Uh, that those who want to defend the state of Israel have uh, have basically maintained for, I don't know, the past like 30, 40 years that was like un uncritically reported on versus like what people's perspectives are now. You, there's no way you could just hit that fucking line like that at a time when like, I think even those who are, very much in support of Israel, outside of Israel, are aware of how much Israel, uh, the Israeli government uh, just lies about this shit. The fact that he just said something along the lines of, they had sex with dead bodies is an alt. And he alted so fucking fast that like most people are going to turn around and be like, okay, dude, what the fuck are you saying? But he doesn't even realize. <laughs> I don't think he realizes how that comes across to the average person who is like only aware of uh, only aware of like uh, the the actions of Israel or Palestine from like what they've picked up in the news as they're like kind of paying attention. I want to first before you do that, I want to commend you, Piers, mm -hmm. honestly, because bringing me on for the second time, I have to commend you. No, for Islamophobes, it's still easily believable. No, the, the level of Islamophobia that you need to be at to believe that is far higher than the average Islamophobia of the average person. You have to build up to that. The fact that you actually condemned... Motherfucker said he watched Hamas people like rape corpses, dude. That's an insane thing to say. It's... Uh, guys, guys, you know what this is like? This is exactly like forgetting the top of the hour ad break and running it at 2.30 instead of at the top of the hour. You know what this is exactly like? It's like Matt Walsh and his inability to read the room because of his zealotry, okay? Matt Walsh is so transphobic that he is off-putting to like the average person who demonstrates a level of transphobia, okay? When you are so transphobic that you're constantly yelling about like children's genitals being cut off or whatever the fuck, the average person hears that and goes, I'm, I don't really understand. Like these people are kind of weird. Like trans people are kind of weird, but like you're fucking gross, dog. You're being gross right in front of me right now. Why are you talking about this shit? And while I, of course, maintain that there are a tremendous number of Islamophobic people in the Western world is a consequence of their social conditioning that justifies the actions of their states historically, but specifically during the war on terror. When you say a lie like that, you're going to be off-putting to a lot of people. People are going to go, that's insane. I don't really like Muslims and I'm scared of them, but I think this guy's out of his mind. The settlements is very good, but people want to know, do you think the IDF are a terrorist organization? Uh, no. You don't think they're a terrorist organization? Okay, well, if you look at the UN definition of terrorist organization, they say killing civilians for political reasons. So you're asking my opinion? No, but if, I, if I the UN definition, the, according to the UN definition, is killing civilians for political objectives. Mm -hmm. Why are they not terrorist organizations? Well, it's, it, well, you've asked me a straight question. I don't yes. think they are a terror organization. So when you see babies like this, the ones, who kill, the ones who kill babies like this are not terrorists. It's horrific. So the people can who I, kill can babies can like this are not terrorists. Well, let me, let me respond. <laughs> yes. Let me respond. We'll, yeah. we'll both, it's not your turn. You can both get into this. Here's my response to that. And I thought carefully about this. I'll be very honest about my own feelings. I, I have a real moral quandary about this because as a father, I... I because I want to defend Israel, <laughs> but also Israel's doing indefensible things. <laughs> I hate these scenes of kids being killed in... Gaza, it's horrific, right? We You're making it terrific. hard for me to defend Israel. I'm, I'm about to explain to you what I think my position is. My position is after what happened on October the 7th, it was so barbaric, so disgusting. So you can kill children? Well, no, what you can do... That's exactly what terrorists say, by the way. Let me answer your this question. Is, this is not a exactly This is terrorism. someone else becoming the host can, of the show you put it down. and now interviewing you. I, I, I thought we were being interviewed. You're going to have your chance. Mohamed, you and I are being interviewed. You're not here to interview him. You're going to have your chance. Mohamed, you can put it down. Don't make him lose control of his own show. You do this all the time. It will not... I'm not going to let it happen tonight. All right, rubbish. Let me ask you... Please have respect for the... No, no, no. Stop interviewing the interviewer and be respectful. And be respectful. Let me... Dude, this man does not know what respect is okay if it smacked him in the fucking face he wouldn't know it get the fuck out of here 
Uh, Rabbi Shmuley is not that good of a debater. I mean, he's a very good media personality. Been around for a while. I mean, big time Trump guy, right? But like him crying about decorum is is pretty funny in this circumstance because like he literally you saw how he opened up on Jank. Just tell me, sir, is it national organization? Yes, you, no, no. I, Why I, not? I do not believe so. They I'm kill not, civilians for political. You have objectives. to let me answer. Go ahead. Okay. Here's my answer to that. When Hamas did what they did, two things. One, Hamas knew exactly what Israel's response would be. They knew they would come incredibly hard back. I don't absolve them. them. Wait, wait a minute. I'm not absolving anybody. I'm, I'm, not, just... absol I'm not absolving them. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying the West Bank is West I know, Hamas. I know. West Hamas. Let me, you have to let me answer. You've you got 44 children killed like this in the West Bank. This is, this, is, this, is, this is ridiculous. Wait a minute, rubbish. Really. Let me just ask you quickly. Go ahead. I believe Israel has a right to defend itself from after that terror but attack. But can they kill children? Wait a minute. Can they? Wait a minute. Particularly after the Hamas spokesman only last week said if they want to do this again and again and again. That's an existential threat to Israel. Which Why don't they fight them man defended. to man? Man Muhammad. to man. Fight them so man to so man. Why do you have to kill children? Wait a minute. Let me Why do you have to <laughs> Fight them man to man. No shot. Let me kill answer children. you, Muhammad. Why? Let me answer of you. Of a ratio of 100 to 1, by Let the way. Let me answer you. 100 to 1 ratio. Let me answer you. Go ahead. Otherwise, it's pointless. Go ahead. So, I agree that Israel must defend itself. I agree. Why is Pierce defending Shmuley's position? Because he's dick riding Israel, but it's like becoming harder and harder to maintain a, uh, a, a position that could be seen as charitable while doing that at a time when, you know, 11,000, 12,000 uh, uh, children are, 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 I mean, 11,000, 12,000 uh, uh, Palestinians are killed. It's too difficult. It's too difficult for peers to, to maintain a, an ounce of credibility in the situation and not like admit that this is ridiculous. They have to get rid of Hamas because Hamas is wedded to an ideology of existentially removing is Israel. Is this acceptable? Wait a minute. I'm coming to your is answer. Is this acceptable? I'm coming to your answer. Chat, you can't see it from that angle. This is not even... Wait a minute. It's not... Hold on. They don't blur it from every... They don't blur it in every angle, I don't think. But it, it's not... Anyway, it's... it's um, okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Just shut the fuck up. Uh, let's continue. Conversation. Wait I'm a sorry. minute. Listen, me, I came all the way through the United States for this debate. Let me finish. And he will not let anyone let me, else speak. And if that's finish. how these Smoke shows work, guys, no, no, no. Guys, you are rude. Guys, you are a bully. Rabbi you Rabbi just Smoke, are trying to interrupt people. I'm going to have a chance to speak, yes, or I'm there's going, no point in doing this show. Rabbi he did this last time, and you allowed him to, Rabbi but Smoke, I won't allow him to, because I will never be bullied by a bully. At the moment, let me be clear. Wait a minute. No one's allowing me to answer your question. Go ahead, sir. And it's this. I believe Israel has a right to defend itself. Okay. I agree that they need to get rid of Hamas. this way? Who are terror groups. In this way. Well, here's the quandary for me morally, right? Why here's is it a quandary, though? I'll tell you why. With Hamas, it's not a quandary, I'll but tell you why. Because country. in war, in war, when you declare war, as Britain did with the Nazis... 100 to 1 ratio. No, no, 100 of course, to 1. There are, Combatant a, to non there are ratio. a far higher number of children in Gaza, proportionate to population, than almost anywhere in the P world. Piers, so when they go Piers, after give Hamas... Me give me a chance. Very yeah, sadly... Mohammed, let me finish. Let me finish. No, no, no. You have done... You are the one who insisted Rabbi on Shmuley, equal time. I never did, Rabbi but you Shmuley, will not respect the I will come time. to you He's literally in 30 you seconds. He's going to ask you a question. In 30 question. seconds, I'll come to you. He's going to come to you afterwards. Let me finish, please. I am Calm in charge down. here, Mohammed. So my final point on this is, unfortunately, in war, civilians get killed. 100 to 1 ratio. 100 to 1 ratio. Yes. 100 to 1 ratio. Yes, they get killed. No, no, not 100 to 1 ratio. It's an unacceptable ratio. Civilians get killed. Uh, Piers, listen. Rabbi Shmuley, in you come. You know, you know, Piers, can I say respectfully, and I mean this as no insult, I'm amazed that you're intimidated by this man. I feel, he, I feel, well, with all due respect, if I can speak, 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 I wouldn't bring him back if I can speak, if I can speak, if I can speak. And he raises a very valid question, by the way. No, he does not, because I have, I have, before he did this debate, he went on X on Twitter and said, I'm only doing it if there's equal time. And then he is violating that. I never asked for equal time. I just want to be heard, but he won't even let me be heard. Let me explain something to you. You said in a, in a video the other day, and you can look me in the eye, you said that Jews are now trembling. I Muhammad, I, I am not. No, 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 don't interrupt me. I, don't say that. I am not I don't trembling. Say that. It's, all on my, it's all on my Instagram page. Don't now, don't you see this yarmulke? It means that I represent something. I'm an ambassador. You're, You're an ambassador You're of Islam. Lying. You are talking about a religion that started the world's first universities, educated women. <laughs> Fatima started the first fierce university in the, in the ninth century in Fez, Morocco. Irrelevant. Now we have a man who says that he's a representative of Islam. He's meant to be speaking he goes, to you. Right? He goes to... 
Speaker's Corner. He speaks about whether five-year-old girls are old enough for sex. He says that gay men ha- are dying of What's AIDS as a, as a punishment from God. No, and I'm sorry I've I have to say this. That. Yeah, by the way, this is Rabbi Shmuley's uh, move, it seems. It's just like, don't address the talking points. Immediately fucking engage in character assassination. And I don't know anything about Muhammad Hijab and his background, but I suspect knowing what I know about Jank and what he said about Jank, he's just probably lying. Never to the that, listeners, that, that. that blood is gushing from their backsides. Right. They're script? better off that. You know what, what it is? Never because said that. you never are said that. desecrating never said that. a great religion. Now, let me tell you no, why. No. Let me tell you why it appeals, why, right. why it's here. Because he will Bring defend. Bring it back to the debate. I will. I will. Yeah, back to he will defend Hamas's away. butchery, running away. savagery. Running away. He doesn't care that Hamas away. Is, an, is an abomination away. to Islam because. Running away. Because Islam, but he hasn't the, done the, the children in Gaza are dying because Hamas uses them as bulletproof vests. Okay. The United States and France okay. and England said yesterday that the Al Shifa Hospital is a military base. Okay. And that's a tiny veneer. Let him have his minute. And that's a tiny veneer of, emer- of emergency rooms. Okay. Oh, a minute. But the underneath <laughs> all of it is a military base. You have a minute. And let me tell Speak. you something. If it's true that any of these countries care about the Muslims in Gaza because they believe what he's saying that Israel's killing them. This is a map of all the countries that took place last week in, in Riyadh to save the Palestinians of Gaza from Israel. Do you know how many, that's Israel a tiny thing, you know how many of them took in even one Palestinian from Gaza? Zero, nothing. All right. Look at that let map. Me, let me, because they so want pointing, to, so the pointing. Arabs let want me, to see, right, no, I'm pointing, 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 the Arabs want to see Hamas. Don't intimidate me, don't bully me. Don't intimidate me, I'm not afraid of you. Guys, I've got a bit of ask questions, it's a debate. Let's come back. Let me ask you one specific question, which he raised, which I don't think actually is your belief. I don't think you have defended what Hamas did on October the 7th. Yeah, I haven't. I think you share our... Are they evil? We, 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 are they unless evil? I'm wrong. Are they evil? About this are they evil? Stop are they is evil? it me or him? I'm are they to evil? Stop Rabbi Shmuley, you're now doing Stop what speaking. you accused him of doing. Stop so speaking. let me ask you, what is your view of Hamas post-October 7th? I think that they, just like anybody else, have to be examined, have to, have, have to look at all and the... What's the, your the opinion about them? Yeah, I think that... If, look, here's my opinion. Let me be straightforward about this, right? Anybody who kills civilians, anybody, whether it's the IDF, I'm consistent in this manner. If, if, if it's proven with un, beyond reasonable doubt that these people have killed civilians in both of our faith traditions, in Islam and Judaism, in the Quran is mentioned, in the Prophet, he said it himself, you cannot kill a woman, you cannot kill a child. I condemn them. I condemn them. That's what I do. Straight away, whether he's Muslim, whether he's not Muslim, whether he's Christian or anybody else. I've already said that. So I'm not being inconsistent here. My question is, if that is exactly the barometer that we're using, if that's the moral reasoning that we're using, then we have to say, look, if you have a 100 to 1 ratio, and that's what it is, a 100 okay. to 1 ratio. And you know how I got this figure? I got this figure from the IDF themselves because they have reported okay, to the... Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Does Hamas deserve to stay in power after what they did? I don't think we should have Hamas in power. What I think we should... Okay. No, let me so, tell you... So, so how we should, do, we should how have... How do you get rid of them? We should have a Palestinian authority with bigger armies okay. and airports, okay. with proper tanks and with uh, uh, airplanes like every country in you the world. You know what? You might be right. But Absolutely. The they won't how, allow it. How do you get the Israelis rid of, won't allow How do you get rid of Hamas? What you don't do, I can tell you for a fact, is try and kill 30,000 of them with a 100 to 1 ratio. Because if you do that, then you're committing genocide because you'd have to kill 3 million Palestinians. Rabbi Shmueli? Do you, know even, do you even know the definition of genocide? What's I haven't said genocide. What's it? You just said it. No, I said, you no, just I said, said it. If you what is the definition of genocide? What's the definition? I said, I said if you do You always claim to be an academic. You're always doubting your Oxford credentials. What is the definition All right. of conditional. Genocide. Said conditional. Genocide. If you do it, genocide is where you'll be genocide. Genocide is where I didn't accuse you. You target an ethnicity for extinction. Geno, ethnicity, side, murder. Yes, if you... Yeah. Okay. Ethnic displacement is also a part of this, though. Like, ain't nobody out here around these parts is going to be like, the Armenian genocide wasn't a genocide. Or Manifest Destiny wasn't a genocide. It was. Forcible replacement... Uh, forcible uh, replacement of an of a ethnic group from an entire... For, like, a civilian population from an area... Forcibly relocating them to another area is still definitionally a part of of genocidal strategies. Also, the definition of genocide isn't like, oh, you hit the certain number and now it's officially a genocide. Ding, ding, ding. No, that's actually a post hoc definition that you add. And the reason for why we have that 
definition is so that we don't do it ever again, which is why it's perfectly permissible to consider something like this, especially when Israel has demonstrated intent to be a forcible ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement campaign. They've said as much time and time again. Okay? It's not a genocide once it's like fully implemented. You do. Yeah, if you kill three million now. Palestinians, now, now, now. are you genocide? There are one. one if you kill three million Palestinians, are genocide. There are one point eight million. There are one point eight million. What's the Holocaust genocide? Muslim What's the Holocaust Arabs genocide? who live in total peace in Israel as equal citizens. In fact, Israel practices reverse discrimination against the Jews because the Jews are conscripted to, to fight question? Hamas. So, if you, Israel, you, excuse me. Well, so are the. Oh my God! He said it's. Israel is actually racist to the Jewish, he said. Excuse me. No, you will not interrupt me. Stop, if Israel, you will not interrupt me. You will not interrupt me. You will not interrupt me. You will not bully me. You will not interrupt me. I am not afraid of you. Stop saying the Jews tremble. Now, let me be clear. Let me be clear. We're getting nowhere if you shout over each other. Well, then let, then you need to control your guests with all due respect. Okay. He said, he said equal time and there's no equal time. Now, there's no equal time. If Israel was interested in a genocide of the Palestinians, why do they have 1.8 million equal Arab Muslim citizens who are in the Israeli Supreme Court? They're not equal. Who are one third of the medical that profession? Question? Do you know that? Do you know, that, do you know that an Arab, pre, an Arab judge put the president of Israel in jail for accused rape? That was Moshe Katsav. That's how little Israel is an apartheid state, genocidal state. This man sitting next to me, Mohammed Hijab, will not distinguish between self-defense when Hamas comes to. Notice the soft liberal. Oh, uh, the soft Zionism of the squishy liberal earlier in the chat. No one will say Rabbi Shmuley is a, is a liberal, nor is he a, a, a soft Zionist. And yet, for some reason, they're both engaging in the same exact strategy. As a matter of fact, he's doing a better job than the chatter did originally. Because when it's an apartheid regime, it doesn't matter if you're a soft Zionist or not. If you are defending the apartheid regime, if you're defending... If you're defending the apartheid, if you're defending that structure, you're still defending something that is utterly unjustifiable, immoral. Brutalize okay. and murder your people versus you when an army okay. like okay. Britain, okay. like France, stops uh, uh, retaliating to the, simply let, protect their own citizens. Have to you say. don't believe the Jews should have a right to defend Rabbi themselves. Say, say it outright then, then say it. The Jews, Jews have a right to defend themselves. They do. Yes, they do. So of that's why we have to go. Everybody has a right to defend themselves. That's why we have to go to Gaza to stop Hamas. Yes, they can go to Gaza and stop Hamas. But no, they can go in. But don't. No, hey, hold on. Let me tell you my position. Let me tell you my. So they can go in. Thank God. He asked me a question. Go ahead. Yes. Answer it. Yes, they can go into even fight. Even Abu Ubaidah, the, the general of Hamas, he said, Nahnu fin tivarikum in Arabic. We are waiting for you. Mm. That's why he's okay. being said. Hold on. You've asked me a question. Go ahead. They do have a right. What, my what I've been advocating all along is face-to-face -face confrontation. What I'm against, hold on, excuse me. What I'm against is a hundred to one ratio because if you have right. hundred, let me finish. Come to block no, if you, if you, let me, All right. Well, okay, fine. Hamas is fine. hiding under hospitals. Okay. What face-to-face -face confrontation? Rabbi, Hamas is Rabbi shooting Shmuley. children face -face. who are going to sell. I'm okay with face-to-face -face confrontation. Two is I like it. Block two is it's exactly the, it's the honourable way. Block two is exactly this question. Go ahead, let's go. My only observation, he hasn't had Rabbi Shmuley, so far, you're being more personal and ad hominem than he is. With all right. due respect, I think that's extremely unfair because well, every ah, time I no, say anything, no, it's not you fucking bitch. You stupid fucking donkey. What do you mean? You brought forward zero evidence so far. You said, why won't the remaining Arab nation states that are like American client states allowing us to continue with our ethnic displacement campaign? That was the one factoid that you brought to the table. The other was to deny that the apartheid even exists by lying and claiming that the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the one, the 23% the, the of the fucking population... You don't need to call him a donkey, dumbass will do. Yes, I wait, why? Why? No, donkey's fine. I call everybody a donkey. You keep, you keep answering for there's, no, there's no racialization of the term donkey. It's a safe one. I actually ask him questions. Because he gives you answer. answer. Also, if Muhammad, if if Muhammad job wants to be re a representative and ambassador of Islam, then he has to take responsibility for his position. I don't want to be any of that. He actually said that Islam I, I, I believes myself. in death. We, we are, you're okay. not going to beat us because we want to die. We're right. prepared to lose thousands Rabbi of people. Really, we're we're is Islam break. really religion of death? We're you taking are a poor ambassador of faith. You believe in martyrdom. Of course. Do you want to be a martyr? Yeah, absolutely. You want to die Martyr, fighting you know, the Jews? I didn't say Jews. Any, who said Jews? Okay. Mar, do you know you what want to be a martyr where? What what is it, what is whoa, 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 whoa. Rabbi Shmuley does this thing where he knows how racist the audience is. And he leans on it so much. Like, 
he's getting away with an unimaginable amount of Islamophobic shit. Like to be like, oh, you want to be a martyr? <clears throat> Being a martyr doesn't mean that you're fucking blowing yourself with a suicide vest or whatever. Muhammad Hijab is supposed to describe that in this situation, but before he can even describe that situation, okay, he immediately hits a, oh, so you want to kill yourself fighting Jews? This is so intellectually dishonest, which we already know. Problem is, Rabbi Shmuley knows how this is going to be seen, how this is going to be viewed. It's really fucked up. Yes. The part of me Calling a Jewish person donkeys and something is pointing the Jesus story, riding a donkey back to Jerusalem. Wait, what? Shut the fuck up. Die for his Wait, us, really? Man qutila duna malihi fa shahid. Shahid. Whoever dies defending themselves, defending their wealth is, is, a, is a martyr. No. Are you do you want to die excuse me, excuse me. defending excuse Islam? Me. But do you want Islam to be this a religion child, of peace? Excuse, you want excuse, to be hold on, hold on. This child for us is a martyr. You're right. Do you agree or not? Because, because, because agree or not? Hamas is using him as a human this is, shield. Really? No. Is, yes, Just Hamas. Like That's gross. That's gross. No, he's doing it. He's still doing it. He's fucking doing the thing where he's like, oh, the, when, when someone, when Muslims say someone is martyred, they mean, oh, like they died as a human shield, which is very fucked up. Islamophobic is shit right there, dude. Straight up. Martyrdom happens in any cause whatsoever. But if you are unjustifiably killed in a situation like this, even if you're a child, you are still considered a martyr. That's why the glory to the martyrs Sentiment is not about like, uh, you know, Hamas militants or anything like that. Even though Americans don't know that and they equate it with terrorism. Shireen Abu Akhlaq would be a martyr in this circumstance, even though she's Christian. Just hiding okay. behind okay. him, Let's correct. go to the next section. All right. Hamas. Let's just, All right, let's I'm time out. Pretty, come on, man. This let's guy's try and, my time. Try not to talk over each other because the viewers can't hear it, okay. right? Let's go I don't mind the passion. Sure. I don't mind the debate. I don't mind the fire. I yeah. do mind if we can't hear what you're saying. It's pointless. Yeah, let's do the minute. Let's thing. go to the second, the second topic, right? This time, Has he had his minute, by Rabbi way? Shmuley, you will go first with a minute to say what you want to say, and then Muhammad, no, what's, uh, what's Hijab, the you'll get yours. Please? So the theme is this, and the question is this for Block Two: Has Israel gone too far mm -hmm. in its response to the October the seventh terror attacks? Okay, Rabbi Shmuley, you have a minute starting now. I just came here by taxi and passed a statue of Winston Churchill. That's in the lifetime of our parents, okay? He is the greatest British statesman of the 20th century. You know what he did when he had a genocidal threat, knowing that Hitler wanted to eviscerate, annihilate Britain? Bro, Winston Churchill literally did a genocide. A massive, massive racist. Not exactly fond of Jewish people either, as far as I understand, but... He carpet bombed all of Germany, Dresden, Essen, um, uh, Hamburg, Israel has not even gotten close to that. Israel does not send its air force to carpet bomb cities. It sends in its military. I have a friend who died, six, six children, 39, because he was tr personally trying to stop a Hamas terror tunnel. Israel is surgical. Israel is go only going after the fighters. Israel has opened humanitarian corridors for the, for the Palestinians to go south. Hamas shoots them and makes sure they don't go. Hamas builds its military. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of the times that we've blown up, People in the South, that was also Hamas. Structures, right? Shifa Hospital is this much hospital and it's this much military. They love using Palestinians and that's why they've stolen their money. They got, they got about $16 billion from the international community. There isn't one bomb shelter in, in God. I love this take. You're so fucking stupid. Why would, first of all, a Mark 84 rocket, a missile, doesn't discriminate against bomb shelters. Bomb shelters only work if you're lobbing ba bathtub rockets that the Palestinian forces have been able to fucking put together. That's number one. Number two, Israel bombs hospitals. Why wouldn't they destroy bomb shelters, you fucking idiot? What do you mean? What bomb? What bomb shelters? They can't even fucking, they don't have cement for the for the desalination plants that they destroyed Gaza they don't care about the, the okay. civilians at okay. all Israel's doing the right thing Muhammad, destroying Hamas. you have a minute what I'm saying is the 100, 100 to 1 ratio comes from the following figures. We know that 10,000 civilians have died. Of them, uh, according to the IDF, as reported by The Guardian, 60, dozens, they say, about 60, uh, Hamas died. 
which we're being liberal by saying 100 to 1 figures. For every one Hamas, you have to kill 100 civilians. That's effectively what we're saying. If the trajectory continues as it is, if the trajectory continues as it is, then you have to kill 3 million Palestinian civilians in order to kill 30,000 Hamas fighters. If you want to ex extinguish them, eviscerate them, annihilate them, destroy them, you have to do that. Now, you have Herzog, who is the president that you, uh, you interviewed, saying that all Palestinians... They are responsible. This man is being more slippery. He's being more slippery than the lubricants that he sells in his daughter's sex shop. And that's the reality <laughs> of the situation. Did you really just say that? You know, you seem obsessed. Wait. Wait. Fucking got him! That's good. That's good. Little ad hominem in there. Sneak that shit in there. Bro, I, I don't... Listen, this is... You can't fucking start the combo... With immediate ad hominems, I love that he just it went and fucked. Wait, hold on. We're going to run that again. I love the uh, fact that Rabbi Shmuley started the combo with ad hominems and got so pissed. So fucking pissed when he got hit with it. Okay, where? Look, look, look. Slippery. He's being more slippery than the lubricants that he sells in his daughter's sex shop. And that's the reality <laughs> of the situation. Did you really just say that? Look, look, look. Immediately check it as well. You seem obsessed with He's like, all right. Turning on the time now. Top of the hour ad break. That's what I was looking for. Sorry, you can't get mad, dude. You can't get fucking mad at the ad hominems if you can't fucking get it uh, launched back at you. You can't get mad when you're the one who's fucking going nutty with it. You said you're slipperier than the lubricant that your daughter sells at her sex shop. You know, Muhammad, get your head out of the Jewish bedroom. It's really bizarre. Can now, we get me, it? Can we get it? Let me be anyway. clear. No, no. Sexual lubricants? How embarrassing. Can we get it? sell dildos. Can we get it? sell dildos. Can we get it? <coughs> yeah, yeah, she has a kosher sex uh, shop. Anna Boteach, also, those of you who don't know, I think is the same daughter that was beefing with motherfucking, that was beefing it up with uh, Drake, the same one that was, like, uh, complaining, or the same one that was saying that she thinks it's awesome that she can hear, like, Gazan children dying with Israeli rockets. Yeah, there's some dildos in here, yeah. God damn, bro, he fucking comstered him. Okay. Get it, Bison. You speak about five year old girls being no, ready. He said, <laughs> Your daughter's selling dildos. Let's go back to the issue. Let's go back to the issue. Let's go back to the issue. Let me ask a question. Why are you shaking? I've got a vibrator in your pocket. Come on, it's a serious I think he's got one of his daughters vibrating. Come on, leave him, please. You are just humiliating yourself. Oh, fuck, dude. That was okay. I'll take it back. That was pretty good, Muhammad. Good job. The issue. Well, cut yeah. all this stuff yeah. out. So there's no point. Why? You Why? Leave it. People should see what uncensored. he represents. There's no it point uncensored. abusing each other personally. Oh, no, no, okay, Pierce, 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 Pierce. I want to stick to the debate. Let's get to the debate. You don't want to do it. Well, end the debate. Let's get, let's get to the debate. Right, let, me, let me ask Muhammad a question. Right. I don't disagree with you. That so let me ask you a question, Muhammad. Would you use the kosher lubricant that Rabbi Shmuley's daughter sells at her sex shop? <laughs> Would you do that? So far, it seems to me, yes. obviously, yes. Uh, a, a fact that many, many more Palestinian civilians, innocent people, are getting killed as retribution by the Israelis for what happened on October the 7th. That's indisputable, right? Their argument is that they're going after a terror organization, Hamas, and unfortunately in war, as Rabbi Shmuley correctly said about what Churchill did in World War II. Churchill was wrong. A lot of Churchill was wrong. Was okay. he a war criminal? Y yes, he was. Yes, right. he was. Churchill was a war criminal. Yes, he was. Churchill, Churchill was a war criminal. All the British Let me do the question. Churchill was a war criminal. Let okay. yes, me do and the George question. Six, was George yeah, VI a war criminal? All of them war criminals. Uh, really? Like, like criminal. criminal. Yes, of course. So so anyone, his hang on, hang on. Listen. Mohammed Hijab might lose the British audience for saying that, but he's winning me. Like I said... I don't know what this dude's fucking deal is. I don't know what kind of shit he's on. I feel like he's definitely one of those, like, um, I mean, he, 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 de he like, argues for... He's like the Islam debate lord, debate lord, right? Like, he loves Islam. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the, the biggest fan of that type of shit. I, I don't really care for it. In this circumstance, however, he's, he's doing a pretty decent job <clears throat> shitting on... Um, Shitting on Rabbi Shmuley.
Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. War criminal, war let criminal. Me ask, so let me get Absolutely. this straight. You think the Collective Win punishment. You think Winston Churchill was a war criminal in, yes. in standing up to the Nazis by killing the, uh, the who babies. killed twelve million people. I believe he was a war criminal. That by doing what he did was a war yes. criminal. By killing in Dresden and Hamburg, it's, by, by, by uh, the indiscriminate killing, collective punishment. My morality says that's impossible. Okay, that means the British people who that's supported impossible. him Can't and kill voted him in. They were My also, morality says that's impossible. Just a second, just a second. That's why I but believe. The British yes. people. Yeah. You believe he was a war criminal? Yes. So, so therefore, you your belief is that no. Retaliatory action. No, by you any can retaliate to the man, not to the babies. Tell me a war in history yes. where civilians haven't been killed. No, oh, I'm not saying civilians haven't been killed. It's Just about this ratio. Or it's about the ratio. It's no, about no, the ratio. What is the ratio? What's the ratio? 100 to 1 is unacceptable. Actually, morally, 100 to 1 is unacceptable. Actually, morally, you should accept. Okay, well, 100 to 1 is an invention. Okay, the real counter to this is simply that we brought about Geneva Conventions specifically because of the actions that not only the Axis took, but the Allied. Um, the Allied forces also took in World War II. And according to at least legal scholars now, looking back at the bombing of Dresden and many other parts of Germany and the firebombing campaign in Japan as well, even though Americans are a, a little less interested in, in making assessments about their uh, <clears throat> justifiable war crimes at the time, it is one of the only instances, like what you're describing is one of the only instances where like the otherwise completely justified military action was not necessarily morally permissible, okay? There are a thousand different things that you can point to during World War II that are completely appropriate. No one will argue against it, okay? No one. So why is it that you try to grab onto the one, the one instance that is still in, in contest, like it's still contested, especially after... We created uh, new rules of conduct. Another good counter is why are we basing our morality in the 21st century and the barbarism of the past? That's what, kind of what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, it's literally about the ratio. How beneficial is it for the war effort versus how many civilians will die? No, I mean, the Dahia doctrine is impermissible. It's not allowed. It's not, like, legally uh, appropriate. It's a violation of international law. And, and same for America's actions in, in many other places as well. The difference is this. If Dresden was conducted as an on-the-ground military operation, people would consider it a genocide. But because it was done with aerial bombardment, it's not considered that. That's the only thing. Aerial bombardment makes it, <clears throat> in our minds at least, more morally permissible. If you had boots-on-the-ground military forces driving through fucking streets and personally shooting every civilian it would not be considered appropriate at all okay the same goes for the atom bomb can you imagine if american forces went in to hiroshima and nagasaki and killed hundreds of thousands of people and shot them dead or lit them on fire no absolutely zero people would think about that as anything but the most horrific actions, the most unacceptable actions, but because it's a, a it's a firebombing campaign conducted with an air force or a atomic bomb, you don't think about it in the same way. Basically, how the U.S. slash West differentiates Nanjing, uh, non, Nanjing from Dresden, Nanking. But again, remember the fire, the fire bombing, the fire bombing of the fire bombing of Tokyo, fire bombing of Japan was also uh, unacceptable. So let me give you a ratio. Yeah. How many people did the Nazis kill? I don't know. You don't know. We know, six mi we, know, we know they killed 6 million They killed 12 million people. I don't know. We don't know. Including no, 6 they... million Jews. Sure. Right? Sure. So 12 million, 12 million how, many died in, how many died in Dresden? How many civilians died in Germany? Do you know? I don't know exactly. Right. So you don't actually know what you're talking about. I do know what I'm talking about because you I know in Dresden Churchill and Hamburg... 3 million. You said it's about... Right? You, unless I'm wrong. Yeah, go ahead. Unless I'm wrong, yeah, go ahead. you said it's to do with the... Ratios. The ratios. Yes. You don't know the ratios. When no, you call, no, I know for a fact. You call Winston Churchill a criminal. What are the numbers? What are the numbers? Wait a minute, Rabbi Shmuley. When you call Winston Churchill a criminal for basing it on ratios, you don't even... Bro, total number of civilian casualties in Germany, World War II. Oh, I was wrong. The German government reported that they lost 4.3 million dead. Civilian deaths during the war include air raid deaths, estimated German civilian kills by Allies strategic bombing have raged from 350,000 to 500,000. To be fair, still a better fucking ratio. Once again, the topic is not on the Palestinians. I know, it's really stupid. Also, if you want to talk about... <clears throat>
Churchill being a, a, a war criminal. Then talk about the Bengal famine. There's no reason to talk about anything other than that. I mean, he, he is a genocidal freak. He is a massive racist. All of these things are true. Um, ultimately, it's not only strategic bombing. No, it's still, it's still legally in the gray area. <laughs> in a sea of things that you can talk about in World War II that is not. Okay? I mean, it was... The bombing campaign over civilian uh, areas in Germany was so radicalizing that we have two, not one, at least two uh, authors and scholars that came out of that that participated in the bombing campaigns. One is Kurt Vonnegut. The other one is Howard Zinn. Howard Zinn literally rewrote his entire brain after that. He was like, this is the worst thing I've done. I can't believe that I did this. It made him reconsider everything that he had known. It made him reconsider his worldview. That's the reason why he became one of the best, in my opinion, uh, rest in power. Uh, Vonnegut was a per- oh oh Vonnegut was a, a prisoner of war who witnessed it, not a pilot. No, sorry. Well, Howard Zinn is a uh, Howard Zinn was a uh, Howard Zinn was a pilot. Howard Zinn literally was a Air Force pilot at the time who participated in the bombing campaigns, and said uh, that it was it was unimaginable. Lol, Howard Zinn was bombing Kurt. <laughs> Twenty five thousand civilians killed in Dresden intentionally. No military targets. Anyway. I, it's, this is a stupid fucking conversation. It's a stupid back and forth. Because I know what Piers is going to say. He's going to say, well, do you think that the British were the worst? Uh, the British were worse than the Nazis because of the civilian killings is what he's going to say. And that's a stupid fucking argument because the militarized death machine in this equation that we're talking about in Palestine and Israel is that's closest to the Nazi militarized killing machine, which is the historically one of the worst killing machines of all time, okay, engaging in in ethnic cleansing campaigns, the closest in that equation is Israel, not a fucking militant faction like Hamas. Even know what they are. No, I know for no. We, uh, there's difference of opinion among the, uh, the scholars. No, there isn't. There is different. Say, there tell is. us course, the opinions. What, what are, are they? they? Tell, you, us, tell us. what they are. Uh, hold on. There's of course, how many in Dresden? Oh, excuse me. Stop speaking for a second. How many in Dresden? I'm, I'm, am I speaking to more? How many in Dresden? Whatever the number. You don't if, know. If it's all. indiscriminate. Okay. I'm against it. No, he doesn't. That's he doesn't. Dresden's about twenty-five thousand. And uh, at the time, the, uh, the Germans were saying 250,000. We know it's about 25,000 today. Let me, be, let me be clear. Winston Churchill was the greatest statesman of the 20th century. That's he saved the world from I agree. Nazi terror. Yeah. That you could live in a country that is only around today because of the bravery of that man showing no gratitude is the height of... Stick on topic. To call all the British people who defeated the Nazis... Who defeated the Nazis... Stop interrupting me. Stick on topic. Who defeated the Nazis, war criminals, his parents, all the other people who war criminals... Let me ask you a question. No, no, no. Let me be clear. Off topic. Don't interrupt each other. Let me be clear. Muhammad Hijab trades in falsehoods. 300 to 1? What are you talking 100 about? 100 to 1. And now he, says that the, to now he says the Jews are about to kill 3 million Palestinians. I didn't say they're about to. I said the if. Fact- God, he's so... Dude, I, God, I hate Rabbi Shmuley. He's such a fucking asshole, dude. He is such a fucking asshole, dude. He's so fast and loose with, like, the substitution that he does all the time with, like, Israel and Jews. And you have to catch him and correct him every time. Always, always, he'll just go, oh, now he's saying the Jews are going to kill three million Palestinians. He's like, he didn't fucking say that. One, he never said Jews, okay? He said Israel. And two, he said, in order for Israel to kill Hamas, okay, to eradicate Hamas, as they've stated, going by the current murder ratio that they have of innocent Palestinian to Hamas militant, they would have to kill three million innocent Palestinians to get rid of Hamas in its entirety. I hate him. I God, he's so fucking, ugh. The fact that this man considers you, you himself an Oxford academic. I was a rabbi at Oxford University for 11 years. This Did is a travesty. From there? Did you graduate from there? This is a travesty. Right, let me ask you a question, Rabbi. Did you graduate from any university? Did you graduate from any university? I have a rabbinical Did you graduate? I, let me answer. You're excommunicated. Let me answer. Let me answer. Let me answer. Oh! <laughs> Oh, shit. He said you got excommunicated. Do you have a rabbinical degree? Let me answer. Oh. I'm, 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 let me, I am a rabbinical right, degree. Honestly, can I speak? This is pointless. Go on, go on. Rabbi Shmuley, is there a limit to the number of civilians in Gaza that Israel can kill to try and That's eliminate a mass? That's a good question. Hamas? That's a great question. Yes, there is. Thank you. But let me ask you. 
Not even one, not one beautiful Palestinian child should have to die. Because he's such a piece of shit. You, you know, oh, he's such a piece of shit. Because Hamas kicked out Mahmoud that Abbas. That wasn't my question. And, yeah, and not one should have to die. God, he's making me hate Mahmoud Abbas even more by bringing him up. Like, the worst person, the biggest Trump dick rider, the absolute worst motherfucker who loves Mahmoud Abbas. What, Palestinians will never recover from this, okay? The PA is never recovering from that. But of course, for the record, for the record, there you have it. He fucking loves Abbas because Abbas is uh, Israel's guy. What, what, what the answer to your question is that Hamas... If they surrender unconditionally, then Which all not of that, do. okay, fine. But is let there them, a limit? Then let them, let them allow all the civilians. But is there Israel, a limit? Israel said that all the civilians can leave. All the civilians should go south. They begged them. And that's something that militaries never do. Churchill did not tell the people in Dresden, come on, and, and, you, no, see, no, you, put, came, put, you came with all your notes. We, we get I'm, the point. I'm not, I'm not here. We get the point, I'm, Mohammed. I get is, the point. This is, this is I all, get the point. This is, this is all proof that he can't debate a member, me. A member, so he has to use these images. Rabbi, debate me. We, we, we didn't Shmuley, ask you to come on with all your exhibits. Rabbi Shmuley, let me ask you a question. A member of the uh, cabinet in Israel was actually quoted as saying that nuclear weapons exactly. were an option that mm. Israel could use. A, no one's ever confirmed Israel has nuclear weapons. It's long been suspected. That seemed pretty clear confirmation. Why, why are you against nuclear weapons? Hang on. If you're, if you're not against Dresden, why are you against nuclear Let weapons? Let me ask the question. Let me ask no, the question. No, but why are you against it? I've done this before, this job. Let me do it. Go on. OK? So when that guy says that, if you're, if you're living as an innocent civilian in, in Gaza, what the hell are you thinking? That an Israeli mm. government member mm -hmm. threatens the use of a nuclear weapon, right. which but, would obliterate yes. pretty much all of Gaza and everyone in it. Absolutely. Thank you for the question. If that were true, why hasn't Israel used nuclear weapons against Nasser when he no, invaded? It's true. Well, hold on, hold on. It's true this gonna... guy threatened yeah, and, the an and, the answer is, and the answer is, no, no. I know the guy, and I spoke to him about it. His name is Amichai Eliyahu. Mm. Israel has Nasser, never carpet-bombed any against, against Arab... Nasser was on, Mohammed, ever, 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 ever. Now, now. My favorite, my favorite is literally... My favorite is literally going, Israel has a really powerful military, uh, and, he, and they're not using their nukes, so obviously they're good. He's like, oh, Israel doesn't have nukes because if they did, then they would use it. But also, the fact that they're not using their nukes, also, I will use as a as an opportunity to demonstrate how much restraint they have. Love that. It's the classic, dude. Every fucking fascist has the exact same arguments always. My enemy is both weak and strong. Uh, we are, uh, you know, we're both small bean and constantly under attack, but also the most powerful uh, and and also incredibly restrained in our uh, reaction. It could be so much worse. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's literally the same as fucking Russia. It's the same as Russia. It's the same as Russia. Russia has nukes. Why didn't they nuke Ukraine? The abusive husband is such a good guy. He could kill his wife at any point, but he chooses mercy and only beats her every week. Yeah. Now, 1967 now, was preemptive. He was asked a question by a... Israel would never carpet bomb a city is so funny because it's like, yeah, through precision guided missiles, we've been able to destroy 42% of the fucking standing infrastructure in the entire uh, Gaza Strip most densely populated area it's like okay so you're deliberately you're not indiscriminately bombing you're discriminately bombing but you're still reaching the same fucking conclusion provocative interview and he said well if you're gonna bomb the same thing it was like uh, it was a Mohammed job type you want to kill all the Arabs three million people just drop a bomb he said well if you want to drop a bomb drop a bomb he was being dismissive and stupid mm -hmm. and he put out a statement the next day saying that never in history would the Jews ever even contemplate doing that let's remember one thing mm. the only place in the, day the Middle East did, one second the Pierce, day before the he only did place, from, the only the place in, in the Middle East where Arabs have any freedoms mm. Israel. The only place where they vote openly, okay. Israel. The only place okay. where Palestinian women can dress the way they want, Israel. The only, and let's be clear, when, when, when Muhammad Hijab gets up and says that we Palestinians want to be a religion of death, you know, I just got a haircut I coming here by an Arab barber here that. in London, and he said to me, I hope, you, I hope you defeat this guy because he doesn't represent us. We want to live. We want to have good lives. We want to be religious. All we right. want to eat halal. Ask, but we don't right. want to die for martyrdom. Me, you are let not a Muslim. Shaking. You're an Islamist. You're let an me Islamist. Ask Muhammad, let me ask Mohammed a question. Down, let me ask Mohammed a question. Health. Hamas has 240 hostages. Stop. Last week. Stop. Hamas has 240 hostages they took, including babies. Sure. Young kids. Sure. Grandmothers who survived the Holocaust. Yeah. I mean, an unspeakable further criminal Amazing, yeah. act. We can agree, right? Of course. 
Why should Israel agree to any ceasefire so long as those hostages are still being kept hostage? Look, um, my position is very clear. They should fight man to man on the ground. On the ground. Well, they are. No, that fighting... That's exactly what they're doing. That fighting, no one can... This is... That's exactly what they're doing. I know. Man to man, they took hostages. Excuse me. They took babies as hostages. He's he's asked me the question. They took infants as hostages. Let him answer the question. You're you're getting excited here. I know it's your Um, sexuals are inclined. You're the sex rabbi. Now you're back to my sex rabbi. You're getting overexcited. Get your head out of my bedroom. You're getting overexcited. Nukes are a no-go in the modern era. What Israel understands, you could drop the nuke equivalent of conventional bombs over a month to get away with it. Exactly. There is no shot Israel gets to nuke Gaza. One. Because nuclear fallout would literally harm Israel as well. Now, of course, Israel doesn't really care about uh, Jewish citizens or, or protecting them as much as they care about killing as many Palestinians. So you could literally say, like, they could still drop it. But the real thing that stops Israel from dropping a nuke is that they have to rely on Western support. Okay. Obviously, the fallout and the effects on the land would be uh, awful, and those are the primary considerations. But the major consideration here is that they can't fucking do that. Because if America goes, what the fuck are you doing? We're pulling support. They're done. They're done. It's over. It is Jover. It has never been more Jover. BDS would absolutely stop Israel dead in its fucking tracks for this very same reason. And that's precisely the reason why it's illegal in 36 states. Because of the American-Israeli lobby. Those motherfuckers saw BDS shred the South African apartheid regime. And they were like, oh fuck, one of our allies got eviscerated. We have to make sure this doesn't happen to us. He's getting excited with me. Let me ask the questions. You guys answer them. Mohammed, answer my question. Why, if you're Israel, would you ever agree to a ceasefire if those hostages aren't released? I'm I'm telling you what my position is. My position is man-to-man combat. Which is what they're doing now. No. That part of it is understandable. Do you understand? That's what what they're doing. No problem. But what I think is not understandable, what is not acceptable, because you said, what's a proportionate response? Mm. That's the question you keep asking everybody. My answer to you is a proportionate response mm. is one where in which the ratios are not 100 to 1. That's on the- your invention. Excuse me, please. Where does that come from? I'll what's your what? source? Okay, tell me the source. The so- tell me the source. IDF. The, the, ah, the can't go time. Yeah, sure, can't tell me when. When did they say it? They said, uh, I know all the IDF no, no, sources. I know, I know Jonathan Daniel Garry. Garry. I Daniel Gary said what? When? Okay, so no, let me say, explain. No, 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 no. Kai is getting one of her favorite treats again. Excuse me. Say, when did he say we're killing yeah, um, it's Palestinians two, 100 to 1? 10 days ago, and it's mentioned on a website. I'll tell you the website. truth is, they don't... Uh, I'm telling you, he never said no, 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 this is a fabrication. Which website? Which website? Go ahead. Which website? You ask me a source. Which website? Ask me a source. Al Jazeera? No, no, no. Is it Al Jazeera? Get, you've asked me a question, right? Okay. Are you scared to hear oh, the response? Just, Go ahead. Okay, the response is as follows. The Guardian, yep. the Guardian yep. has reported that the IDF have said that in terms of the numbers of Hamas that have been killed... I'm answering this question. Oh, no. the, the Hamas that have been killed, they say, quote unquote, dozens. Now listen. Hamas or civilians. You said civilians. No, no, wait a minute. You said civilians. Wait a minute. I'm telling you where I got the 100 to 1 ratio. Mohammed. 100 to 1 ratio the comes numbers, from The numbers have There's dramatically invented it. 10,000 civilians the numbers to 60. Have... It's actually more than yeah, 100 to 1. You said that you called out on anything. One. He has no sources. He has no No one can hear what you're saying. Okay. Let me respond to him. This is a blood libel. Let me respond to The Jews have a right to respond to a blood libel. I'm about to question him. It's a blood libel. Here's the reality. I read that report. That was about Good. at least two weeks ago, yeah, right? Days, yeah. The numbers have changed a lot. Yes, they have. Israel now believe they've killed a lot more Hamas. But they don't know exactly how many, because actually, how do you tell on the ground By the way, Pierce, to the Hamas one, one, one fighter thing, you, and you know, a member say, of the general population? Just, you know, according to the IDF, mm. and we've done a, a study on the name that they put on X, mm. they, have, uh, they had 1,280 names that they put on X, mm. and according to Haaretz, they put... Uh, Haaretz, is a, as you know, is a left-wing newspaper in Israel... They also put the names of those who have been killed. Guess what? Mm. According to them, 340 military have been killed, which means Hamas's ratio of combatant right. to no combatant is three to one. All right. Imagine Hamas is doing... Yo, he's right. Dude, lesser evil. Hamas is the lesser evil. I'm a lesser evil voter, guys. I'm a lesser evil evil voter. Thank you for uh, accurately calling the American-Israeli lobby and not the Jewish-American lobby. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny that these guys are, like, pro-Israel, but so anti-Semitic at the same time. Like, they're pro-Israel because, you know, Israel's killing uh, Muslims, and that's fucking awesome, right? But they're so anti-Semitic that they're, like, can't stop doing Nazi propaganda in the midst of, like, defending Israel. They keep 
They literally, hey, by the way, the ADL can suck my nut, okay? The ADL, top to bottom, suck my fucking nut. Jonah Greenblatt going on MSNBC being like, the IRS should go after uh, pro-Palestinian supporters and whatnot. Bitch, what are you doing? What are you doing? These motherfuckers are running rampant, but hey, they're pro-Israel, so they can say whatever kind of fucking Hitlerian, anti-Semitic conspiracies they want to, because ADL's too busy trying to fucking dox and maybe even criminalize anyone that says Palestinians are human beings. Where's your fucking smoke for Elon Musk? Where's your smoke for the likes of Charlie Kirk, Tucker Carlson? Fuck are you doing, ADL? You fucking monstrous pieces of shit. Demonstrating that you're not in it for like actually combating anti-Semitism and cynically weaponizing anti-Semitism against fucking peace activists and shit. It's so nasty, dude. It's so fucking nasty. Damn, bro, you just made the list? Yeah, whatever, dude. Suck my dick. Kanye was just a few months too early from being in respected panels on Newsmax. I saw some tweet saying, like, Kanye was a few months too early with his anti-Zionism. He'd be pop I mean, anti-Zionism. <laughs> his anti-Semitism. He'd be popping off right now. And what I wanted to say to that was, if Kanye West was fucking pro-Zionist and also anti-Semitic, okay, he would literally be regarded as like just like charlie kirk like they would just be like yeah we don't really care he'd fit right in so many of these motherfuckers who are like i love so many motherfuckers who are like i love israel israel can do whatever it wants israel has a right to defend itself then turn around and say some of the most insane bullshit about jewish people literally hitlerian propaganda which we will get to in a little bit that's why i was going to talk about uh elon musk and and his anti-semitic takes Doing a better job in protecting civilians than Israel. Three I, to one. Versus I would to say one. I would say that Hamas, by what they did on October the seventh. Hundred to one versus three to one. Wait mass, a minute. Mass. Wait a minute. Mass. Wait a minute. Ordered by by doing what they did, they ordered de facto the disintegration of northern Gaza that we're seeing. Of course. And, and the, all the civilians and the suffering. Death, have you seen, have you seen this? And the deaths of sure, thousands sure. Let of let finish, civilians. Let him finish. Let they me. knew what was going to happen. I agree with that. So that's why they should go. In, 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 2000, in 2005, Israel unilaterally withdrew from Gaza and allowed, Ham well, Hamas won an election in 2006. They could have built Singapore. You know what they did? They took larger foreign aid per capita than all of Europe received from the Marshall Plan. And look what France and Britain, look how beautiful London is. They took that money and they bought bullets and bombs. They did not- Dude, this is so funny. No, the reason why all of that aid amounts to nothing is quite literally because you keep bombing. And not even him. I'm talking you as in like, obviously, Israel. He's speaking on behalf of Israel. He loves dick riding Israel, let's be real. But it's just fucking ridiculous. Like, what do you mean, dude? Oh man, this aid surely doesn't work because we keep blowing it up. <laughs> also, the other part of this, uh, the other part of this is like really fucked up. He's American. Yeah, his daughter lives in Israel and he all his son is, I think, literally fighting in the IDF right now. He is Israel's biggest dick rider. Don't fucking act like he's not. Don't do that bullshit where it's like, oh yeah, he's not speaking on behalf of Israel right now. He's just speaking as an American rabbi. Anyway, it's fucking nuts because like everything he says, everything he says about like uh, Gaza is still, I think he actually lives in the UK. Wait, he does? I thought he lived in America. He's like a massive Trump guy. But anyway, the point I was trying to make is the reason why Gaza hasn't been able to fucking do anything with like all of the aid is because Israel benefits from that aid. All that aid still goes through Israel. You have to go and buy shit in Israel to bring, bring it into Gaza. What you can bring into Gaza is also very limited. And then on top of that, Israel blows up all the shit that they build anyway. Life is severely restricted inside of Gaza. Not build hospitals, not schools. They stole it from the Palestinian people. Ismail Haniyeh is worth four billion dollars. Oh, hey, I don't care about Colin I'm Michal not is worth He's four billion, billion dollars. Why are you talking then about call him? him Call him I don't an evil call criminal. Him anything. You're I don't to. Call him anything. He says he won't. You see, no, he will no, never I, condemn Hamas because he has condemned. No, it's good. I have. I have. I've heard him, him do it. Excuse me. Excuse wait, wait, no, no, no. He condemned it's Hamas's much, attack. He's How never condemned Hamas. Well, let me ask you. Do you condemn Hamas? On what basis? On Here general. we go. See? No, no, hold on. Play you accept now? Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Every answer is on what basis? On what this? On what this? What's your source? Even if you ask me, if you do condemn IDF, I say specify your context. 
in what exact context do I... Do you do defend Hamas excuse, as a terrorist organization excuse, uh, that just went and killed 1,200 people, burned them alive, beheaded them, uh, 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 and uh, took 250 uh, hostages? Do you, con do, you, calm, do you condemn calm, them or calm, not? Calm, do you condemn calm, them or not? Get your calm, head, calm, get your head calm, into calm, the debate, and calm, do you condemn calm, them or not? Calm, See, this is a, this is a debating tactic. It's 2 on 1 now. Let him answer. Let him answer. It's 2 on 1. It's become two on one. Right now. You're not a victim. Stop the I'm victim, but now it's two on victim. one. Stop okay. the victim. <laughs> you, you love portraying yourself as a strong man. Now you're a victim, it's two on one. You probably could take two on one. So answer it. Answer the question. Is Hamas a terror organization you condemn? Yes, Is that no. something uh, you Is your Hamas said a terror organization probably could that, take you, two on one. that you. It's a reasonable question because you okay. asked me, so, 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 is, sure, sure, is the sure. IDF a terror organization? Okay, beautiful. I'll answer your question directly. Uh, Hamas is as much a terrorist organization, yet uh, no. Hamas shouldn't be called a terror organization so if, the, uh, so told you. if if the IDF isn't. Why? Okay. Because if See, it's are. either both or not. Okay. This is, this either is, both okay. or neither. Okay, but just, to, just to extrapolate your position, because yeah. you believe yeah. the IDF is, yeah. then you're also saying that Hamas is. Let me tell you my position. Say it. No, no, no. Say it. Say it. Say it. I missed it because I saw a new al Qassam Brigade thing. Sorry. Um, he's. I say specify your context. In what exact context do I... Do you defend Hamas excuse, as a terrorist organization excuse, uh, that just went and killed 1,200 people, burned them alive, okay. beheaded them, uh, 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 and took 250 uh, hostages? Do you, condem calm, you, calm, do you calm, condemn calm, them calm, or not? Calm, calm, do you condemn calm, them or not? Get your calm, head, calm, get your head calm, into the calm, debate and calm, do you condemn calm, them or not? Calm, See, this is a, this is a debating he's, tactic. He's, he's, it's 2 on 1 now. Let him answer. Let him answer. 2 on 1. It's become two on one. Let him You're not a victim. Stop the I'm victim, but now it's two on victim. one. Stop okay. the victim. <laughs> you, you love portraying yourself as a strong man. Now you're a victim, it's two on one. You probably could take two on one. So answer it. Answer the question. Is Hamas a terror organization you condemn? Yes, Is that no. something uh, you and Is your daughter Hamas said? a terror organization probably could that, take you, two on one. that you... It's a reasonable question because you okay. asked me, so, so, sure, is, sure, is sure. the IDF a terror organization? Okay. okay, I didn't hear what he said because... I, I didn't I didn't hear that. Like, he just kind of dropped that. Beautiful, I'll answer your question. Directly. Mohammed well, Hijab is an amazing debater. Not this topic, though. I mean, dude, 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 listen, dude. I would not be able to debate Rabbi Shmuley. I, I, 100%. He's very good at, like, destroying your composure. He's such, like, a... He's such a shitty person. I would lose my mind. I would fucking... I would probably try and fight him. Like... There's no way. I, when I saw the Jank debate, it made me angry. It made me so fucking angry I couldn't watch the rest of it. He doesn't care about debating on the merits. He knows he can't debate you on the merits, so he will only debate with uh, by getting under your skin. He's just insulting. Like he, He'll just lie, smear you, insult you, get under your skin. And then when you get emotional, he'll go, why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling? You're such a big, scary guy. You're such a big, scary Muslim man. Hey, Piers, you should, you know, you should shackle your big, scary Muslim uh, a guy here. Uh, Hamas is as much a terrorist organization. Yet doesn't that kind of make him a shitty debater, though? It doesn't matter. Nobody gives a fuck about chat, please. No one that loves debates can ever be can ever be uh, uh, yelled at about uh, not liking selfishry. People that love debates love stupid, pedantic, nonsensical tautologies. They love all the back and forth. They love the drama. This is not a debate. This is like debate pervertry. Uh, debate pervertry demands this kind of uh, back and forth. This is great. Uh, no... Hamas shouldn't be called a terror organization See, if, the, uh, so told you. if if the IDF isn't. Why? Okay. Because if, See, it's are. either both or not. There we are. This is either both or neither. Okay, but just, to, just to extrapolate your position, because yeah. you believe yeah. the IDF is, yeah. then you're also saying that Hamas is. Let me tell you my position. Say no, no, it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Hamas is let a me, terror Rabbi Shmuley, let me get the answer. The unholy Shmuley won't let me speak. Right. I'm asking you a question. At least that was funny. That was the first one you did the whole thing. Maybe we could be friends. Let me ask you Let me ask you again. Unholy Shmuley. Let me ask you. Given you've already stated you believe the IDF is a terror organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am, I to, no, no, no. am so, I to assume legally or that you believe... Legally or morally. Well, hang on. Go on. Am I to assume that you believe Hamas is now? No, this is, what I'm, this is my position. But you have to give me 10 seconds at least to answer, right? Legally, I think you shouldn't call Hamas a terrorist organization if you're not calling IDF a terrorist organization. That's my position. Because, but you do both. No, hold so on. Call them terrorists. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me finish. 
Because if the, as we said, the UN definition of what a terrorist organization is mm. to kill civilians mm -hmm. in order uh, in order to achieve a political objective. However, on a moral and yes. theological, philosophical yes. level, I agree with Rosalind Higgins, mm -hmm. who was uh, the justice of the International Criminal Court, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, the Court of Justice, ICJ, a British justice. By the way, she was a Holocaust survivor as well. She was Jewish. Yeah. And her position is that she believes that the word terrorism or terrorist is actually useless. And she says that it's... Or I'm putting to her... Oh, I, can I, you answer my question? Answer answer question. Answer, oh, oh, He's going on like that just to let evade me, let the question. Let me finish. So I'm answering your question. So I'm saying that as a moral construct, I think it's a neo-colonial social construct used by people in order to, to label some people as terrorists and other people as well. So okay. as a moral category, okay, yes. okay. I don't designate it as a moral you know, category. Okay. You know, you know, as, a legal, as a legal category... Do you believe, yeah, as you a, personally, Mohammed yeah, Hijab, yeah, do you yeah, believe good. that the IDF and Hamas... That's why I separate between, uh, like, actions and, like, the, the civil governance of, of... Like, the reason why terrorism is such a... Uh, the reason why terrorism is such a powerful statement is because that way you can literally cast aside the Gazan Health Ministry by being like, Hamas is terrorist. Well, the Gazan Health Ministry, they're terrorists. They're backed by terrorists. Like, ridiculous. That's a ridiculous statement. America is a terrorist state. If someone were to come up to me and say, I don't believe in the fucking vaccines because, like, the CDC and the FDA are, are pushing the, uh, these vaccines, I'd be like, you're a fucking stupid person. These are entirely separate you know, these are entirely separate institutions built by people that are doing entirely different things. They have a, d a different set of standards. It's so stupid. A both terror organization. Not entirely separate? No, it is. It is separate. Their goals are separate. I think yes. If if you yes? if you say if you say yes. yes to IDF, you should say yes to Hamas. No, yes. If you say no to IDF, that's what I'm Hamas. asking you what yeah. you Hamas believe. Hamas is a terrorist organization. Uh, what if, you if, believe? If you say yes to IDF, you okay. can say yes no, to Hamas. No, let me, yes. no, I'm asking you what you believe. Yes, I believe legally, according to the definition. Yes. Yes. If you say yes to say. Hamas, okay. you can say yes Pierce, to IDF. Pierce, 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 yes. Pierce, we could go on to the next. I've got a, we all going to the next. Dude, ask him to condemn the IDF, man. Condemn the IDF. He keeps talking about how sad he is that people are dying. Say no to the idea. We're going to we're going yeah. to the next we're going to the next block. Uh, but that's interesting. But morally, I don't believe the category has any weight. No, but you morally have has no designation. But, but you have made your position clear, absolutely. which is that you believe they're both terror organizations. I believe that according to the law, absolutely. Okay, and that's interesting to yes. me. Okay, let's but I have come, to say, no, I have wait, to say, wait, let's come to when the you next... call the IDF a terror organization, the IDF keeps one no, point eight opinion. million Arabs it's alive opinion. in Israel. To one oh my God! You said the IDF keeps one point. Uh, eight million Arabs alive in Israel, like, like that's a threat. He's talking about it like they're hostages, dog. What the fuck, yo? His racism jumped out a Hamas, little bit. The, this is invention. It's a fabrication. Let me you move on even, to the last. Get block. more pictures out. It's unbelievable. Rabbi, this this is how you lose your a son debate. Your son is an idea. I brought your son nothing is an idea. He could be like this. No, my son, my son, he could be dead sorry. like that. My son is in the idea. You're here in the safety of the studio. Wait, yeah, his son's in the IDF. Yeah, your son is doing acts of terror right now, probably. Think about how you want to do martyrdom. You're really risking your oh, life here. You this, you talk, you're big talk. Your you son talk could a lot. be dead right now. Like you, attack, you, attack, okay. you attack Ben Shapiro's your, wife. Your son is in the IDF. You, 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 you what, do you actually like, what, what, what do you mean? Like, you, you, can't, you can't just be like, yeah, my son's in the IDF. He's like in Gaza right now. Okay, what's going on? What's he doing? Post, right you now. actually posted could a clip right saying now. that with someone else saying that Islam like teaches you how to get women to listen to their husband. What do you think? If you think you're in the idea of you're a terrorist, if you're currently fighting in Gaza, you are most likely engaging in acts of terror, yes. If you're a Palestinian militant conducting a military operation on October 7th, the likelihood that you engage in active terror is high. Very, very, very high. Okay? I don't have that issue. I don't have the classification there. That's an act of terror. Okay? Indiscriminate killing of civilians, that's terrorism. That's precisely what the that's precisely what the IDF is doing in Gaza. Precisely what the IAF is doing in Gaza. That's precisely what the IDF is doing in Gaza right now. Yeah. You can't have it both ways. I'm nice enough. I'm nice enough to at least like put an even moral playing field between the IDF and a fucking militant faction that is violently in using acts of terror in resisting an apartheid regime. The fact that, like, we're making a moral equivalence here shouldn't, like, it, you should be excited at that prospect because there is no moral equivalence in that circumstance, okay? It's fucking ridiculous. 
of course, if you put it on the same moral playing field, the IDF, again, not lesser of two evils here, it's the worst one out of the two, just simply looking at, you know, casualty numbers, targeting of civilians versus military security forces. The Palestinian militancy has, you know, demonstrated more restraint on October 7th than Israel has. So, looking at it from a purely mathematical perspective, that is the truth. Your this is all false, black false bag. bravado, false... False machismo. Your son, if you're Mindy, a real man, go to dead. the Middle East and fight. What are you doing what in do a tunnel? Right. Right. Fight with him. Fight with Can him. we move to the last one? Which you is... should be there. You, you have the right to fight no, with no, 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 I'm not. A, you, you use your you, son as a human shield. You, you, you try to bully people in debates and it's being allowed. He's this, using his son this, as a human shield. I want to move to the last ironically themed subject. Is peace possible? Okay. Not on this basis, right? But we've got to try and get to peace. So you get a minute each again. Uh, Mohammed, you'll go first uh, this time. So you get a minute from now. OK, so I just want to say that this man is... Committed. No, no. Is peace pos no, ever no, possible? I've got a minute uninterrupted. Is peace ever possible? Can I is speak uninterrupted? No, you're speaking about the subject. I can say what? Well, he's been attacking me. Don't I attack, attack him personally. We're not going to use it. It's pointless. Okay. I'm going to take it, just for the record, we'll put it on YouTube so people can see it all in context, right? But on my show, I'm just not going to have half of this, what I thought was going to be a serious debate, taken up with you two personally abusing Von each other. Von Bismarck it's pointless. Said, excuse me. Von Bismarck said, I repay people with the currency that they pay me with. Right. If he's going to come with ad hominems, as you've acknowledged, I can come back with Right, but you did, and you shouldn't have done, because you had the high moral ground. Ad no, hominems? No, 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 I believe this man no, I believe is that bringing, that bringing up Jewish sex as bad as each other. Stop. In You've this both been as bad as each other. Even sure. that. On the personal stuff, sure. you've been as bad as each other. Let's start again. You get a minute from now. Is peace ever possible? Go. Justice is a prerequisite for peace. In South Africa, uh, when the apartheid system, which we know for a fact Israel is an apartheid state because it has laws like the right of return, which only, only, only allow Jewish people to come into the country. And if they convert, by the way, to Christianity or to, uh, to uh, Islam, they are stripped from that right, which is, it meets completely the definition of apartheid as Paul Cornell Law School and according to the UN Convention 1973. It's an apartheid system. And as a prerequisite of an apartheid system, you have to be a racist. If you support that, you're a racist. No doubt about it. So number one, 1973 apartheid Law. If the black South Africans have been displaced, if they have been displaced by the whites and then they were trying to come back into their country and they were not allowed, and then you asked them, is peace possible? That's not the question we'd be asking them. We'd be asking them, is justice possible? And that's the question that we're going to be asking because he can all uh, sit there and talk about all these things where the IDF, his son Mendy, is being attacked by, vibrated by the, the rockets and he's selling him and his daughter selling vibrators to the public. <laughs> <laughs> unnecessary thing at the end again. I hope you keep that. I don't think he should have said that because he was spitting. Because he, he was spitting pretty fucking hard. Like, you don't need to, you don't need to dilute your message at that point. Uh, Rabbi Please, Shurin, one okay. minute on is peace ever But it's fine. I mean, he still spit. I revere countries like the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, where I've spoken several times. I am safer as a Jew wearing a yarmulke in Dubai and Abu Dhabi than I am on the campus of Columbia University or even... First of all, this is a two-parter. It's a two-parter because it's like, dude, why do you automatically assume that, like, as a as a Jewish person, like, you're definitely under threat in, in Dubai? It just depends. It depends on where you go, okay? It depends on where you go. It depends on who you encounter. There are anti-Semitic people everywhere. This is correct, Okay. The idea, however, that he's like, oh, yeah, I'm safer wearing a yarmulke in Dubai than I am in Columbia campus, like, you know, the Columbia University, is psychotic. Okay? It's psychotic. You're literally safer in America in a college campus, unless we're talking about mass shootings, in which case, you know, it's also, that's you know, not great, but you're safer in America in a college campus than you are in fucking Tel Aviv. Like, what do you mean? What is this, like, safety argument? It's so stupid. It's like, you literally are safer as a Jewish person in America than you are in Israel because Israel maintains an apartheid state. And because of Israel's maintenance of an apartheid state, there's also rocket fire that happens to fucking fall on top of Israel regularly. It's so stupid. It's yet another idiotic uh, way in which 
Israel is is making the world less safe for Israeli citizens. Like its own inception, its own design is supposed to be that like this is a safe space for Jews that you can always go to no matter where you are. 16 million Jews on the planet. You can always go to Israel. This is your safe space. That's why we have to maintain this, this uh, demographic dominance that we have over our own apartheid state. And ironically, that interest in maintaining this, this demographic dominance has made the world less safe for Jews in general. It always does. And it's, it, it always does for Israel, too. To wear a headscarf is a sign of solidarity. You mean a keffiyeh? Yes, of course. Don't let anybody tell you you can't wear a fucking uh, a, a keffiyeh. That's like... That that personally is like... <laughs> nice, dude. We got some, we got some real, uh, real brilliant debaters in the chat today. Yeah, Palestinians will always tell you to wear it. They think it's awesome. Don't listen to anybody that tries to tell you, like, oh, it's actually, uh, you're stealing their culture or anything like that. Harvard these days. Mm -hmm. The Mohammed bin, bin Zayed is just an incredible leader. Um, I saw in the Gulf states the Islam that Mohammed Hijab rejects, but the Islamic world embraces. That's why they made peace with Israel. It's a technologically advanced, tolerant, forward-looking, very traditional, very religious Islam. And that's, why, and, that's why, and that's why they've made peace with Israel, and peace will continue to be made. All of these countries are praying for Israel to destroy Hamas, because Mohammed Hijab is an outlier. He's an extremist, and his views, whether his views as he represents them at Speaker's Corner of things about women being sub... To, okay, okay, but well, let, let me just be clear. All of the Arab countries want Hamas destroyed. And, that's, and the proof is, when they had their conference, Riyadh, last week, they did not even okay. once call to bring in any evacuees. It scares the shit out of me every time, bro. Because they want Israel to establish a more democratic okay. regime in Gaza. Which what was that? It's the top of the hour ad break alert. Wee woo, wee woo. Telling you that if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free with Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Oh, yeah, baby. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Which will they will do? Israel's Here's winning this war. Here's my follow-up to both of you, right? Just give me a very, very quick snapshot of in 20 years' time how peace could have been achieved. Very quickly. Okay, the first thing is when Israel withdrew in 2005, almost 20 years ago, um, if Hamas had not come to power, if they had taken all the international aid that they got, um, tens of billions of dollars, peace would have been achieved by building businesses on... So funny. Yeah, totally, dude. Yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, why, couldn't, uh, why couldn't any Palestinian authority, as a matter of fact, uh, rebuild the, the, the... Oh, my God. Why am I fucking forgetting the word for this? Oh, my God. Holy shit. My brain is the airport. Thank you. The word I was looking for is airport. Oh my God. In 2001, Israel blew up the airport in Gaza. They, no, I always fuck this up. I always forget the, the word airport for some reason. I don't know why it always escapes my brain. But how do we get there now? Okay, we get there now by destroying Hamas, making sure that there's democratic elections, let the Palestinian people, not Mohammed Ijab, not Shmuel not Pesach, not I mean, you both speak agree Hamas them, should be gone, right? They, we can they, agree on this, right? They, we agree they, that they, there should they, be a they bigger need, Palestinian need, authority with armies and airplanes. I'll come to you in a moment, Mark. And, 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 and the way we have And the way we have They should have tanks. In the history of the world, no two democratic rockets powers have ever gone to war. That's why, since the end of the Second World War, there's been no war here in Europe. We need to see a democratic Gaza Hamas won an election in 2006. There's a then war in Europe all... now, by the way. In Correct, Ukraine. because it's against a tyranny. No, I said no two democracies ever gone to war. No. Putin is not a democracy. He's a tyrant. In the history of the world, no two democracies have ever fought a war. We have a democracy in Gaza. So, so what does peace look like in 20 years? Peace looks like the Arabs voting for their rulers. I guess he's not wrong. Israel is not a democracy. Voting and backing them, uh, seeing Israel as a partner, not being humiliated that because of this tiny little right. red dot that's surrounded, that solution. that's a humiliation. Two state solution. I well, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. If 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 two state solution is a Hamas state wanting to eviscerate Israel, uh, he doesn't God. believe in it. But he doesn't he believe doesn't in believe a two state solution. He believes in a final solution. No, that's no, what no, really no. scares okay, me. Okay. You don't believe in a two state solution. You believe in a final solution. The way you speak about Jews. Oh my God, I. I'm, I'm, it's too much.
voting and backing them, uh, seeing Israel as a partner, not being humiliated that because of this tiny little right. red dot surrounded, that solution? that's humiliation. Two state solution? I, well, you know, aha, what aha, I, I know. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. If, if, if two state solution is a Hamas state wanting to eviscerate Israel, uh, Hamas, he doesn't God. believe in it. But he doesn't he believe doesn't in a two state solution. He believes in a final solution. That's no, no, what no, really no. scares okay, me. Okay. You don't believe in a two state solution. You believe in a final solution. The way you speak about Jews from. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, it's too much. You believe in a final solution, and it's scary. I like that. Do you believe in a two-state solution? I love Jewish people. If that second state is Mexico and Canada, yeah. If that second state is 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 Gaza, then of course not, because it'll just become another genocidal enemy wanting to wipe Israel off the map. That's pretty unequivocal. He doesn't really want a two-state solution. I don't want a two-state solution. That's a that's that's a terrorist state to destroy Israel. I personally believe this whole question should be left to the Palestinians of what kind of solution they want. However, having said that, this man has written in his book. A war in Israel. That is uh, the settlement. I didn't write a book called the War. In Israel. It's, uh, it's called the uh, the Israel Warrior. Something oh, thank like that, you. Right? Thanks for plugging. Ah, fantastic. I appreciate fantastic. that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, in that book, he writes you, that the God issue of you. excuse me, the issue of settlements that me and you both condemn mm. peers. I do. Yeah. 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 We do. He doesn't condemn it because he sees a, an ancient uh, biblical reason to be in that whole land. Oh, I think Israel, I think me. Arabs and Israelis uh-huh. should be able to live wherever they want. Uh-huh. I want Arabs to live in Jerusalem. Uh-huh. I want Arabs to live in Tel Aviv. Uh-huh. I want Jews to live there. I don't believe in the Uden Rhine Israel. I don't believe in Arab. I am so proud that Israel has 1.8 million Arab Muslim citizens who are protected by the IDF. Yeah, but he calls the IDF a terrorist. Yeah, they are Shmuel, defending Shmuel, Muslim Shmuel, lives. Shmuel, Shmuel, Shmuel. What you should be less proud of is the rapid expansion exactly. of these settlements on the West Bank. That's it right. has been incredibly you condemn divisive. That? You condemn it's that? been, in my view, illegal. It's been declared illegal. Illegal by everyone's view. Happen. Well, Pierce, the UN, let me, Pierce, let me human rights. There are many things I'll defend. Let me answer. There are let me many answer. things I'll defend Israel about. That is indefensible. Let me answer. Absolutely. Let me answer. Absolutely. If you go to places in Judea and Samaria in the West Bank, why are you calling like, Judea and Samaria? Like, like because why those, are, those that? are the biblical land. Who cares? Why do you call something Arabia? It's for the Arabs. No, 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 it's Judea, it's the Judea, land. Now, you don't know history. It was always Judea and Samaria. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Why can't we have one? Why can't we have one? It's just such a stupid fucking argument. The bank is the West Canaan. Bank of a river. According to the Bible. We don't call Canaan California the, the West Bank of the Canaan? Mississippi River. Call it Canaan. Now, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Call it Canaan. If you go to the Barkhan Industrial Park in Judea and Samaria, you will see, I've met the Palestinians, I've interviewed them. They are paid 20 times the salary working for people you call settlers. They want them there. It brings civilization. It's only jihad. Oh, I fucking, oh, it's so gross. They're bringing civilization. Dude, yeah, it's uh, it's the same, it's the same barbarism that you see from colonial powers. It's just like the colonialist defense. No, Israel is not bringing civilization. If Israel was a civilized nation, it would not maintain an apartheid state. You cannot consider yourself to be civilized. Jihadis who don't I, I wanna, want I it. It's back. only jihadis, and that's why that's you're not saying... True. Yes, it is true. That's not true. I've, I've interviewed them myself. I know many, myself. many Palestinians can I just make a, can who I, definitely look, do not okay, want them. You know, you, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. There's only jihadis that don't want the West Bank to be occupied. Fucking filth. Piece of shit monster. Excuse Excuse me. Me. The, the, you know let Palestinians want to live under Mahmoud Shmoli. Abbas with no democracy? Shmoli. Let me come to Mahmoud. I'm afraid to criticize Shmoli. Mohammed Shmoli. 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 Yes, my friend Mohammed. Go ahead, Mohammed. Come on, please, let's, let's please, be a please. conversation. Shmoli. You're wearing my favorite blue color. Of course I'll let you see. Fantastic. Speak. For that reason? Yes, Brilliant. Thank you. Just because uh, I'm wearing the blue? My mother loved that color. I thought it would have been because of Israel, because you... Oh, that's right. You wore the Israeli <laughs> colors, Israeli colors today. Is it, Mohammed, is that, is that like... shake hands? No, please, I don't want to, because your really? hands are shaking. Your oh, hands I'm are sorry, shaking. But, I mean, look how it's peaceful. Why I don't you shake, shake my hands? No, no, I'll shake hands with you. You wouldn't shake my hand? After what you said today about me, I can't shake your hand. After what you said about my sex life, and I'm shaking your hand. Stop, stop, stop. I just want to say... You won't shake my hand. You won't shake my hand. I guess there will be no You know, You know, what he said there is a little bit telling because you know the, the blue colors and Israel and all that kind of stuff he defended Dershowitz which was Jeffrey Epstein's uh, lawyer for that very reason because he's a supporter of Israel I defended I, Dershowitz I know. Did you go- Dershowitz when I fought over him going to you Qatar defended. you don't know anything you wrote on the observer you're, 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 at, you're, you're abysmal you're ignorance is shocking irrelevant, irrelevant, me irrelevant, and Alan observer. Dershowitz had a huge fight over him to the defending Qatar who did you go gives, to the island who gives, no, come on guys get back to coffee did you go to the island Mohammed Mohammed anyway 20 years time Mohammed Mohammed 20 years time I don't care about Alan Dershowitz I know Alan Dershowitz 
this gonna is the use the stuff about Alan Dershowitz. Forget it. What is right? your obsession no, with sex? I don't get it. I'm not going to use any of you. Both of you seem totally obsessed Unbelievable. with sex. Unbelievable. Well, I want a book called Kosher Sex for Marriages. I didn't write it to get into other people's. Wait, what the fuck? He did. Bro. No, oh, he literally wrote an article, bro. I didn't know this. Bro, Rabbi Shmuley Boteach. Where are the Jews to defend Alan Dershowitz? The legal legend and tireless Israel defender faces toxic and unsubstantiated accusations. Ain't no fucking way, dude. He just got dursed. That's crazy. Alan Dershowitz is among the finest debaters I've ever encountered, both live and in print. Some of the arguments he has advanced on Israel's behalf are legend. <laughs> some of the arguments literally are like, why sometimes killing people inside of a hospital is necessary? That's the argument that he was launching last night, Alan Dershowitz was. Responding to the Palestinian argument that humiliation at the hands of Israel is the reason they resorted to the terror, Mr. Dershowitz said that even if that were true, which it's not, no one people in the history have ever suffered more than the Jews of the Holocaust. There's simply no excuse for the murderer, and one retains the power to choose another. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now come to the scurrilous and downright weird accusation that Mr. Dershowitz and Prince Andrew engaged in underage sex with a woman tied to a once-jailed financier. That's a very weird way to say a victim that was sex trafficked by Jeffrey Epstein. So he tried to be like, oh, I fought uh, uh, Alan Dershowitz over him going to Qatar, which he did. So that's kind of crazy. There's no way any of us can know if it's true, but I believe Mr. Dershowitz, and not just because he denies it, Rather, it would seem that if any of this happened, the woman in question would seek criminal charges against Mr. Dershowitz or his least civil damages. Wait, what? She has. Rather, she has implicated him in a civil uh, suit against someone else. We are all mindful of the women who are victims of sexual crimes. What the fuck? I don't care about either of your sex. Mohammed Hijab said, did you, did you go, go on? Did you go to Jeffrey Epstein Island? Lies. <laughs> Okay. He seems Let me pretty ask you, interested in mine. Twenty right. years time. I'm not interested. In Twenty years time. What does a potential peace look like? I don't know. But that's that's a speculative question. To be honest, you ask me a hypothetical. You Two-state solution. Do a, I don't know. You ask me a hypothetical question. I, you am, you yeah. do, I asked you a hypothetical. You said I don't do hypotheticals. I wanted uh, to give me hope. Why did you not answer my hypothetical question? If you're asking me which a one question, that Belfast question. Why? Huh? Remember, I asked you the Belfast question and you didn't answer it. I don't think there is the only parallel. Why didn't you answer the, that one? Because of different situations. No, but it's hypothetical. You're asking me a hypothetical now. Why? But you don't have to answer. I'm just asking you. No, but why do you have a double standard? I don't standard? think asking you how peace might look like is hypothetical. No, it's talking about the future in a, in a hypothetical. Yeah. 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 How would you like it? Let, let me rephrase it. How would you like it to be resolved this crisis? Okay, fantastic. Okay. Okay, look. Yeah, let's look at history. River right? to the sea. That's how you want it, right? No Israel. Come let on. him answer. Well, don't answer, answer for him. him. Honestly, you'd be surprised to, to know this. And people talk about, you, you said this, I have to correct you. I looked at the Hamas charter, Hamas himself, yeah? Mm. In, in Article 16, even they say you can have, in Article 31, they say that you can have peace between, you, they can have a shared land between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. They even say that. that I, I think the most radical elements, everybody you want, uh, the jihadis, these ones, that one, no one actually wants the extermination of Jewish people. That's a, that's a actually, lie. Actually, that's not the, true. The, the, come Who, on. That's not true. Wait, wait, wait. No, let, me, let me say. He hit the I, I I feel like I want to skip the rest of this. Like, I can't believe they go on for another, like, 20 minutes it's crazy we watched 45 minutes of this shit and it's like hurting my brain